In the words of Anstel Easton, landscape photography is the supreme test of photographers and often the supreme disappointment. Ansel Easton Adams, born in 1902, was an American photographer and environmentalist. His black and white landscape photographs of the American West, especially the National Park, have been widely reproduced on calendars and books. Today on the Arts Express, we see it through the lens of landscape photographer Dio Adedayo. Dio Adedayo has always felt happiest behind the lens. He had a national diploma in photography from the Westminster College, passing out with distinction before proceeding to the University of Westminster to study photography arts. His documentary, Cremation, was adjudged as the best ever the university had ever seen since inception. By 1990, Dio Adedayo had become a professional with an inclination to the social aspects of photography. However, over the preceding years, Adedayo's interest began to shift and anchor around the themes of his first love, landscape and documentary photography. For him, with portraiture, there is an emotional engagement and intimacy between the photographer and his subject. Landscape photography allows for a greater authorial voice and artistic freedom with endless prospects and opportunities to explore wider vistas. Following this rediscovered path, Dio Adedayo worked as a freelance photographer from 2002 through 2007 and asked to his credit the opportunity of being the hand behind the lenses of a magazine's best-selling edition captioned See Dubai and Die in 2003. This edition has been attributed to the opening up of Dubai as a tourist destination to Nigerians. Thereafter, he was the official photographer for Nigeria, the heart of Africa, a project that precipitated a lot of traveling all around the world, exhibiting Nigeria to the rest of the world in pictures. Within this period, with the introduction of the e-passport, Adedayo's pictures were watermarked on the pages of the Nigerian International Passport pages an honor he considers as the highest that could ever be bestowed on an artist and one that will live beyond him. We are all artists, one way or the other, as long as you can see, because we all paint with our eyes and we see things. So art to me is something visual, unless you want to go into the nitty gritty of uh, academics to say, okay, you want to define this. But generally, everyone with both eyes uh, just, photography is not about picking up a camera depending on what you want to do to say okay I want to photograph this that should be you should have conceptualized what you want to do and see the effects of light because photography itself is about drawing with light you know the effects of light on what you were doing and mainly it's my brain that is working uh, um, when people ask me what type of camera what kind of camera do you use to me, it's only an amateur that will ask that kind of question. The professionals who want to go deeper and find out, oh, how did you manage to get this? What are the things behind this, behind that? What are the stories behind it? You know, and that is why if you gather a million photographers together in this room to photograph someone, you are going to have a million pictures. No two pictures are the same. So it's more of the brain, actually. I do my research before leaving home. I have an idea of the hand product. What am I going to use it for? So those are the things that determine the time of equipment I will take with me into the field. Uh, unfortunately, in Nigeria, uh, people think by having a 35 mil camera, you are a photographer. The 35 mils are the Canon, the Nikons, the Sigma, Sony, and the rest of them. Meanwhile, now, it depends on the kind of work you want to do. Um, say you want to shoot a 48-sheet billboard advert, 
there is no way your 35 mil, your Canon, your Nikon will be able to get the result you're looking for. So hi, okay, I need a medium format camera or I need a large format camera. Unfortunately, if you're shooting a wedding, I used to in those days, but I don't think I'll be able to now, to use a medium format camera. And I'll have about 10 kilograms of equipment on me. No, about 15 kilograms of equipment on me running to cover a wedding. But of course, with the advent of technology, digital comes in and digital photography just messed the whole business of art because they say these days to get an image you might shoot about 2,000 images now trying to edit what are you looking for meanwhile in those days when you are using films when you are confined into 36 exposures you know you have to think look through your viewfinder what do you want to shoot before you click you know these days you don't do that but generally I do my research before leaving home and then get into the field, you, you program, you do a recce as well. I would say in the last 15 years, yeah, 15 years, Many thanks to my very good friend, Donald Baba. Everybody knows him as Don Baba, who started training people. But the person that really changed photography to be a professional in Nigeria, and honor is not even being given to him as well, which is really sad, because people don't read anymore, is Dele Momodu, the Ovation publisher. Ovation changed the face of photography in Nigeria and today Ovation has given back to about over a thousand children. This day style might be popular today. This day style is a copy of Ovation. All the newspapers started doing celebrity magazines and what do you have now? You even have television programs doing what Ovation is doing. So for me, as a profession, a lot of young people, very brilliant chap, very brilliant chap. I've seen so many work out there, very brilliant chap. Uh, doing something wonderful, you have uh, Demola Olaniron or Ademola Olaniron. You can Google him and see what he's doing. You have Oluwa Tobi, Loba Delaja, you have Aisha Kuta. You know, you have several guys, you have Ajala Deyemi, who are doing wonderful things. You know, and unfortunately, people are still looking at the mainstream industry as Oh, you have to be an accountant, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be a medical doctor. Meanwhile, all these jobs are things that uh, you have to go to the office at 9, come back home at 5, or you are in the banking industry, you won't see your family for the rest of the day, you know? Meanwhile, in terms of photography, whether you are in the steel or video, look at what Clarence Peters is doing in video. You know, these guys have taken things to the next level, and in terms of video production, I can gladly say they are competing with the best in the world. When you look at the musical videos, all the things that goes into it, Ayoshonaya and the rest of them, what they are doing is so fantastic. So for me, it's a profession that is coming up. And luckily, if I'm not into photography, I will have been an actor. Yes, because I, was, I, was, uh, I came early for that. Uh, when I was in secondary school, uh, I was very good right from uh, class 2, I've been acting and I acted throughout. Uh, I even became the leader of the Dramatic Society at a point. Uh, so if I have not been in photography, I would have been an actor. On our theatre segment on the show today, we place our limelight on Oshunaike Toy. Toy Oshunaike is an actor and a theatre director who learned on the job he started his professional career over two decades ago. His work stands him out as a total true practitioner of the arts. Toy advocates artistic excellence that has no cultural boundaries. He had his training working with erstwhile theatre directors like Wale Shoinka, Chuck Mike, Jide Ogumade, Tunde Awosomi, Neji Akone, Nick Mono, Bayo Dunaye, Felix Sokolo, Matthias Gert, 
a former Fafua among others. Oshonaike has also acted in Eleshin Oba in Walesho Inka's Death and the King's Horseman, Walesho Inka Festival 1994, Dozier in Horse on My Back, Africa Project Germany Tour 1998. Oberika in Chino Achebe's Things Fall Apart, UK's Took USA Tour 1999. Baroka in Wallace in Cars The Lion and the Jewel, UK Tour of Bite 2005, Olympics 2012. Toy Oshinaike has also directed a number of plays, from Echoes from the Lagoon to The Incorruptible Judge, What's This All About, for Naptip, Festina, Creative Arts Fair, Echo Akete 2015. The Lion and the Jewel, Waiting for a Lottery for British Council, Lagos Theatre Festival 2014, and many more. Toyin has featured in several award winning television stroke radio drama series. He received the National Association of Nigeria Theatre Arts Practitioners Award for his outstanding contribution to the development of theatre arts in Nigeria. To me, art shapes um, life and living. And because um, without art, of course, um, talents, um, culture, and, and, and literature will not be put in perspective. So art is what puts things in perspective. Um, I always say that the world is made up of arts and science. We know what the science, we know what science is doing from camera to um, computer to space. So what, what is art doing? Art is just forming um, the shape of our um, scientific life. I keep telling people who have um, tried to correct many times that um, um, sometimes I introduce that I have introduced myself as having trained on the job, which was corrected and on one of my international trips that um, I did not um, train on the job but I learned on the job so I tried to find out what that meant and then um, of course that put us put me also in perspective of my journey which um, I would vividly say that I learned on the job meaning that um, if you trained on the job it's either you're, you're in school and you were practicing at the same time but learning on the job is that you're not in school but you are practicing all of it, all of the time and I learned under great directors who would easily jump from practice to um, um, academics. So I learned a lot of things which were so challenging, which took me back to my dictionaries, literature, buying books on theater whilst I was surviving, and then um, the experience also. So I learned on the job. That's been my story so far. I knew my flair when I was gripped by the spirit of theatre. Let me just put it that way, um, way back. Um, I knew that my flair was more of um, directing. I thought more of managing the affairs of theatre. But later professionally, I knew that, you know, it was um, directing. That's why I say art, that's what art does. It, it puts everything in perspective. Um, I knew that was what I wanted, but you see, I was also being seen as a, um, an actor and people wanted me more to be an actor so they gave me more of acting jobs than the directing jobs so I knew that um, there was no way I could have made that statement of being a theatre director other than having to start 
to practice as a theater director. So I funded some of most of the productions which I practiced with. And um, bit by bit and time by time, working under, like I said, professional directors like Chuck Mike, Wale Shoinka, Niji Akone, um, Nick Monu, the former Fafua, Jokel Siva, you know, and a host, I mean, a whole lot of others, you know, who have different style and approaches to theatre, which even while I'm being directed as an actor, having done my job as an actor, I also still understood why, why is he doing, you know, so, and then um, that put all my experience together as a, an actor and then, of course, later on uh, as a theatre director. <laughs> One play that made me outstanding is even the play that I did recently and um, unfortunately because of the problems of theatre we, we could not perform. It's the same play that um, put me into the limelight in theatre. I would say that I've been prepared by so many other directors in the past but I, I, I've not, I, I did not hit as much limelight as possible as when I did um, I played Elish in um, Death and the King's Man in 1994. Um, during um, um, Wally Schenker's 60th birthday and um, it was to be played by a bigger, older actor who was in a bad one who, for reasons of maybe uh, I should end the <laughs> endowment, he could not make it. So, and um, my director, when he put it on me, and I said, with this so much English that I, I do not even understand, I mean, have you read that <laughs> Death and the Kisses, man? I mean, that's what some people feel makes Wallace Shoenka more of a literary icon, you know, but... And I couldn't understand it so much then, but the director took me bit by bit, line by line, about what those things meant. And then um, he was by me all through, Jide Ogumbadi, who directed them, alongside with Ben Tomoloju. And I started to see myself in papers. As a director, I liken myself to some um, professional footballers who have played football and also have become coaches now. <laughs> of course, um, an apari like me with Madrid, um, meaning that um, it doesn't make you be better than those who are trained as directors who don't even have like, acting experience. But also, you just may be endowed with that directing skills and experience of acting. So you, you, it is easy for you to understand your actors it is easy for you to reach your actors because you remember some of your own most, I mean, very difficult time. In fact, as a director, it makes you a better actor when you're directing. But you know, you can't go on stage and play all the roles. But you feel you know it. But I also find out that if you're not careful, every, every actor will be playing the way you would have loved to interpret it. So that's the danger of an experienced actor directing. So I've learned that as well because some people will tell me to uh, display. I see you in all the roles, <laughs> and I know that I've failed partially in a way. But um, and of course, we grow better by it. Like I say, I keep I'm learning on the job. So I'm fatai, not rolling dollars, but rolling naira. I say every time, keep watching. Cubism is an early 20th century avant-garde art movement pioneered by Georges Braque and Pablo Picasso and later joined by Juan Gris, Jean Metzinger, Albert Glaze, Robert Delaunay, Henri Le Falconet and Fernard Ledger that revolutionized European painting and sculpture and inspired related movements in music, literature and architecture. A primary influence that led to Cubism was the representation of three-dimensional form in the late works of Paul Cézanne, which were displayed in a retrospective at the 1907 Salon de Tom. Other influences on early Cubism have been linked to primitivism and non-Western sources. Cubism has been considered the most influential art movement of the 20th century. 
The term is broadly used in association with a wide variety of art produced in Paris, Montmartre, Montparnasse and Pouteur during the 1910s and extending through the 1920s. In Cubist artwork, objects are analyzed, broken up and reassembled in an abstracted form. Instead of depicting objects from one viewpoint, the artist depicts the subject from a multitude of viewpoints to represent the subject in a greater context. Cubist artists were non-conformists who wanted instead to emphasize the two-dimensionality of the canvas. So they reduced and fractured objects into geometric forms and then realigned these within a shallow, relief-like space. They also used multiple or contrasting vantage points. Though primarily associated with painting, Cubism also exerted a profound influence on 20th century sculpture and architecture. Life is your art and open away art your camera. Oneness with your world is your film, your bright eyes and easy smile your museum. Nothing beats moments captured with photography. It's a wrap on this edition of the Art Express. Stay tuned, same time, same station next week. I am Tolilope Lamidou. Bye for now.